Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kingdom greetings and grace and peace to each and every one of you. With love from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is Prophet S.D. Hima McLean here. And uh, it's truly a pleasure and honor uh, to be on this live broadcasting. Hey, I see none other than Joshua Brown. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very kindly for joining me. I also see uh, Takora Butterfield and Tanette. All right, if you're actually joining me, uh, see that God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Well, listen, I do apologize for the delay. I'm typically on here every um, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, um, I had a very busy schedule on this week, so I endeavored to be on here either way. Uh, so that's the reason for the delay. But I just want to thank you all uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be a part of this live broadcasting. Let me just go ahead and acknowledge a few more. I see Cesar, Medi, uh, Vance, Annette, uh, Tamika, Gully, God bless you. Uh, Pastor Diane, uh, great to see you, woman of God. It's been a while. I see Vanessa. Uh, Gary, Navisha Nadine, always so supportive. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate the compliment and your kind words. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead and invite uh, a few more people on this live broadcasting. I see Michael Thomas. Great to see you. All right, let me just go ahead and invite a few more people that I'm going to uh, go ahead and get started. So tonight's topic, I want to talk to you about... Um, just breathe again breathe again and when god puts sinews on your situation hey man of god pastor andrew god great to see you uh terry rice god bless you see a royal i love you how are you sweetheart amen let me just go ahead and invite a few people um if you haven't already please go ahead and invite a few people um as well and start a watch party guys i would truly appreciate that okay uh, i'm not gonna take too much time talking uh, i want to get right into this and uh and then delve right into the conversation amen god bless you woman of god i see none other than prophetess uh the lady how are you uh indira i love you god bless you uh, it's truly a pleasure and honor to see you woman of god uh i see brendan james booney jessica white forrester god bless you thank you for joining me let me just invite a few more people and then we can get started uh, once again, uh, tonight's topic is going to be uh, when God puts sinews on your situation, breathe again. But I also want to kind of take it in, in a different perspective. I want to talk to you about. Um, I want to talk to you about. I'm sorry about that. I want to also talk to you about sonship, amen, and the ability uh, to speak things into existence by God's uh, creative power that He has uh, given each and every one of the believers and so i want to just emphasize on sonship amen and the authority that god has given us to do so um especially by apostolic and prophetic charge and so i do want to talk to you about that tonight i pray tonight's message will be uh, a blessing to you amen so i'm not going to do too much over exertion uh, tonight because i do have an extremely uh busy week ahead of me okay so i i don't want to take up too much of your time not too much overexertion, but I'm going to be um, basically teaching tonight and just um, giving you some uh, kingdom principles and kingdom nuggets. And I do hope that uh, it will bless you and be somewhat of an enlightenment. Okay, my audience is slowly starting to build. Give me approximately about 30 more seconds and then I'll conclude the invitation and get right into the topic. So once again, thank you so much. I appreciate you, all of you, to taking the time out of your busy schedule to be a part of this live broadcasting. All right, God bless you. Let me just acknowledge a few more that jumped on. I see none other than my covenant brother. Uh, great to see you, um, Apostle Emmanuel McCoy. Uh, great to see you, man of God. Amen. Praise God. And I also see uh, woman of God, prophetess. Angela Robertson, Apostle, great to see you. Angel Fabri, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'm going to play it safe. Newman, great to see you. Great to see you on here. Sylvia, Paul, Carissa, and so many, and so many others. All right, all right. Well, listen, as I share with you, in retrospect, I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, when God allows you to, to breathe again, to breathe again. And so I just basically... 
want to share with you uh, that when we when we look in the beginning, when God made Adam, God bless you, uh, Deontay Cook. Great to see you, sweetheart. Uh, when God, um, in the beginning, when we look in the beginning and we see that God created Adam, one of the things he done when he created Adam, he made Adam to be in his image and in his likeness so he made adam with all the right materials he made adam with all the right substances uh, uh and, and he infused inside of him purpose but in order for man to have completeness one of the things that god did that was very uh uh, unique and distinctive the Bible says that God did something profound and what he did with Adam which is the first Adam is that he blew breath into his nostrils which simply suggests that there was a divine transference uh, and, and infusion that took place uh, and, and so the sovereign God that blew breath into Adam literally extracted something from on the inside of him and infused it and deposited it inside of adam right and so when he did that adam also was able to have uh, uh god's intellectual spiritual uh, uh um emotional moral spiritual capacities so man did not just receive breath but he received uh uh, uh the god's intellectual spiritual moral emotional capacities which means that now what was ever that whatever that was inside of god is now also in man whatever god breathed in a, a man is a part of who he is which simply means that god uh, has given us his dna uh, we have an inheritance with god uh, we have sonship with god hey god bless you love you thank you so much for the compliments i appreciate it uh, Kevron, uh, Pastor Kevron, uh, Minister Stephanie Carr, my sister, uh, Naomi, Latasha DeMonte, great to see you. Amen. So now we find that uh, our man has all the capabilities that God has given him. And so the Bible says that man became a living soul and there was an awakening. So man was not just uh, at a dead state, but there was an awakening that took place on the inside of him. And man could not be awakened lest God blew his breath into Adam. Adam went from a lifeless state to a state now of receiving uh, life. He received life. And so the life that God has given him was not just natural life, but spiritual life. His spiritual life preceded him. Because when God breathes something into existence, it has the ability to precede your natural and, and precede you and go into a different realm. Are we all you hearing this teaching tonight? And so uh, when God breathes inside of you, it's not just life but he also breathes purpose if god did not breathe life into adam he would be aimless he would just be existing but not living okay uh he will be existing but not living and that's what's happening uh, with many individuals especially those within the body of christ and, and churches today we find that people are just existing but they're not living and so god wants uh for us to be able to live the god type of life that he has given us he wants us to be able to live lives that is fruitful that is productive and also the inheritance to let you know that you have dominion power and authority as i said tonight i'm not over exerting myself i'm just going to be teaching tonight and so he's given us sonship now the reason why many of us live uh, uh excuse me defeated lives is simply because the reason why a lot of us live defeated lives is simply because uh we're praying we're constantly praying but we're not exercising our kingdom authority and dominion that he has given us so oftentimes people don't know the sonship excuse me that they have with god sonship says i no longer have to beg or plead or tarry 
for what rightfully belongs to me because you've been engrafted. You have sonship. So a lot of times people are not operating by faith. You find yourself praying and constantly praying over the same thing over and over and over again habitually with no result. So that's why there are some individuals that feel as though prayer does not work. And it's not that prayer does not work and it's not that God is not hearing your prayer or that he's not taking heed to your prayer, but your prayer is not attached to faith, uh, attached to your prayer or uh, 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 your words has to be authority. When you have sonship, you have authority, you have dominion. So now you're no longer begging and pleading for a thing and hoping for a thing to happen. Now you're just walking into something. Are you hearing this teaching tonight? You're actually walking uh, uh, into something and you have the ability to speak it into existence. As I said in retrospect, in the beginning, when God blew breath into uh, Adam's nostril, he gave him his capabilities, which also was infused inside of him creative power. And so whenever we as God's uh, children, uh, uh, sons and daughters of God, whenever we proclaim something, it too has to obey and it too has to show forth the power and the demonstration of God because of the same breath that was infused inside of them, inside of us. And I'm going to talk to you tonight also about Ezekiel chapter 37. And I want you to understand this teaching. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to do all this extra stuff. And all this extra fluff because I want you to understand the power and the authority that God has entrusted us with. This is a teaching tonight that's going to be revelatory and that's going to be profound in nature. Okay, so when, when God blew breath into Adam, all of these things was infused and deposited. Which means that that same creative power, that same sonship, that same dominion, power and authority is also active in us today okay so it wasn't just active in adam it wasn't just active in adam it is still active in us today that's why the bible says when ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones the lord god said to him son of man can these dry bones live that's right men of god and so god wants to get us into the place and the position of exercising our sonship, kingship, and dominion. Especially if you are going to have uh, uh, an apostolic or prophetic grace on your life. These are one of the things that God wants to empower us and to teach us. Is to begin to exercise our dominion. Our, the power and the sonship that he has given us. We have jurisdictional authority. We have a governing grace. We have creative power. We have the infusion and the DNA of God uh, infused and deposited on the inside of us. As I said, God has given us a divine transference of his intellectual, moral, spiritual uh, capacities. And we have the same ability to demonstrate power just as God did. So now you are, that's what the Bible says, you are no longer children tossed to and fro. So you don't operate as a child begging a father for something that you already possess. If you possess something, you don't ask necessarily have to plead for it. You just take possession of it. And that's what God wants us to do. I hear a lot of uh, prophetic uh, words that have gone forth <coughs> uh, that God has been speaking through his the mouth of his prophets and, 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 and apostles that God is changing the pattern of things. And also he's giving us a fresh grace to go into regions and, and take over uh, regions um, by uh, a jurisdictional authority and power. But in order for this to happen, you have to understand the power that lies on the inside of you. And as I said, I'm going to do teaching tonight. I'm not even going to get too, too uh, um, worked up over this because I want to teach. Okay, so there was an infusion that took place. Uh, and so we, we have everything that it takes to be operational and functional in this earth realm. 
okay when when um the breath of god was deposited in adam he no longer walked around aimlessly are you hearing this teaching tonight he was awakened there was an awakening that took place in adam an awakening that took place likewise i'm using the parallel here that when uh, when uh, ezekiel spoke to the dry bones there too was an awakening okay so you, uh, number one you have the power of god to create an awakening but what my question to many of us today is that why is it that so many churches are dead so many of us are spiritually dead and so many uh, eras in our life is spiritually dead and and is decaying the reason why that is happening is because there is no awakening there has not been an infusion of god's breath on in the inside of you so it is either you don't have the holy spirit as you say you do or you do not know how to exercise the authority that god has given you you can be a weapon of mass destruction in the kingdom and still get sabotaged still get and still be defeated still not able to see the victory simply because of ignorance hosea 4 6 says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge and because the lack of knowledge you will not be able to maximize your full potential uh, in the kingdom especially when it comes to your destiny you see when adam was created he was created but he did not have purpose it was only the breath of god that created purpose that's why people don't have purpose because they don't have the breath you cannot say that you have power you have rank you have an anointing without the breath of god right without the ruach breath of god without the ruach you will not see physical tangible manifestations in your life okay and and again this is why the body of christ is going through a spiritual decay as we see here in ezekiel 37 is because the ruach is absent the rock breath of God is absent and what he is doing is that he's looking for a vessel that he has deposited himself inside of and he's saying in order for you to see manifestations again you have to believe that you have this power so don't just have the breath of God inside of you but also believe that you have it and so many of us have been pleading with God oh father God I'm I'm pleading and I'm praying and I'm fasting and those are great things but there comes a point where you have to get beyond the elementary stages of your Christian walk to the point where you're no longer operating as a preschooler and as elementary but you are now operating as one that is experienced so that you can now see a dead situation and you can declare a thing you can decree a thing in so much that if you speak it god and heaven will agree with it and it shall be activated and this is the creative power that god is giving his prophets and his sons and daughters today that if you decree a thing according to the word of god that he will activated on your behalf because the bible says that if his children ask for bread will then he give you a stone he's not going to give you a stone if you are decreeing and asking for a thing you're gonna you're not going to go to your apartment and knock 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 constantly knocking and knocking on the door and ringing the bell you're not gonna do that it's illogical for you to do that because you are the owner of that thing you own it you have taken uh, authority of your own place likewise likewise when you are a kingdom ambassador a kingdom citizen you don't have to constantly be banging down the door knocking down the door you have the keys you don't have to constantly over exert yourself because now you are operating at a different dimension you are no longer operating as a child but you are operating 
from a place of, of, of sonship, dominion, and power that I have now showed myself experience that God can entrust me to have creative power. He can tr entrust me with the key. All you need to do is just use your key, unlock the lock, and it shall be open to you. I want you to understand tonight that portals are accessible to you. Huh? Portals, ancient gates, treasures are open to you, but you need to uh, uh, begin to understand that you have access, you have power, sonship, and authority. If you don't exercise this, through your ignorance, you are going to be standing there knocking at a door that you already have access to. Huh? And that's what many of us do. We have treasures hidden on the inside of us as well as locked up in the realm of the spirit that God wants you to get access to. But you, you're, 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 you're not operating in that authority to unlock it. On this week, when I've been, I was praying and fasting on this week, and during my time of prayer, I was praying for myself and a few others. And the Lord showed me a treasure box. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he says, treasures, huh? Treasures are open unto you. Treasures are open to you. And this is what God wants to give us. He wants to activate treasures, ancient gates, portals, gifts to be unlocked, mysteries to be unlocked to you so that way you can possess the land, so that way you can be blessed, so that way you can actually decree what the word of God says and you see it manifest. Many of us are decreeing the word of God in our life but still not seeing the manifestations. That's right, treasures are open. So you're saying to yourself, for the past 10 years, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Um, um, I, I shall never be broke. Um, and all of these promises that we're, we're declaring, but we're declaring aimlessly and we're not seeing the manifestations of it simply because we don't really know how to activate the word. So it requires faith. The Bible declares, according to Hebrews, that faith now is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You need to then begin to ask God to help you to begin to operate in a different dimension. Lord, teach me how to access the invisible realm and not just to access the invisible realm, but now how do I habitate? In the invisible realm you should learn how to habitate in the invisible realm and in so much that the supernatural then becomes natural for you it is no longer uh, just a uh, 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 something that you say you're gonna experience occasionally it should be a realm that we are constantly active in huh as I said we have dual citizenship we should be able to uh, operate in an earthly plane as well in a supernatural uh, uh, realm all at the same time and that's because he has given us that ability he has given us that ability but you need the wrong breath of God inside of you to be able to do that huh and a lot of people are decreeing declaring things but there are no manifestations because the Holy Spirit has not created an awakening or purpose inside of them there are too many of us that are just existing but not living huh uh, i hear a lot of people say that's right habitate in the supernatural realm i hear a lot of people say well maybe this is what this is the life that god wants me to live maybe he wants me to be broke maybe he wants me uh uh to to go through this warfare yes you will experience warfare but he does not want you to live in warfare. At some given point, he rewards his uh, he rewards his sons and daughters. Okay, he begins to reward you. He recompenses you for your righteousness, your holiness, uh, not that it's mer uh, uh, merited uh, through your human effort, but because it's a gift of God. 
It's because it's an inheritance. It's because you've been engrafted. It's because God, Jesus died on the cross so that you can inherit it. That if you are willing and obedient, you then shall eat the good of the land. Because there was a point in time, as a, as, as a prophet of God, I was saying to myself, well, maybe God just want me to live like this. And then I started to find scriptures to justify the, to justify the lack thereof. I was, I started to begin to say, well, um, you know, whatever situations you find yourself in, be content. But I was using the scripture out of content because I, I wasn't seeing manifestations. Um, I wasn't seeing manifestations in my life. And so I began to justify my circumstances, my inadequacies with scripture. But God never promised for us to live that way. He's never promised for any of his children to live defeated, to live broke, to live like paupers, to constantly go through warfare, the mental torment. Then he would not be God. How then would God be sovereign, be the good father, uh, be one that's Jehovah Jireh, your provider, to be your healer, to show himself to be a deliverer. Then to live below your means is to discredit the ability of God. I'm going to say that again. To live below your means and your potential that he's initially predetermined and predetested, uh, determined for you and de uh, 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 destined for you is to live below the standards of God. There is a standard that God has. If he is the God that is all powerful, then he's going to show himself powerful in your life. He's not going to show himself as one that is a weak God. Okay? He's not going to show himself to be. He is an all-sufficient God. And we need to begin to condition our minds to think that God is all-sufficient. If you are in need of healing, he is an all-sufficient God. If you need a financial breakthrough, he is an all-sufficient God. But a lot of times, we want God to... To give us the blueprint and do the work for us. And that's why so many of us are not seeing the manifestation. He's giving you the blueprint. He's giving you the breath. He's giving you the wherewithal. Everything it takes to, uh, 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 to succeed in life. In this life and in your spiritual walk. But we want God to do the work for us. And God is saying, no, I've given you that authority to do so. I've given you the authority to operate in dominion, okay? And as I, 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 I might have spoken this to you before, and I just, I'm saying this because I really want an awakening to happen on the inside of you. God now wants to recondition our, our mind and thinking. The way we perceive things is the manifestation that you're going to produce. If you lack the ability to see, then you are not going to produce anything. And that's why here in the book of Ezekiel, he said, son of man, can these dry bones live? He was positioning and conditioning his mind to see what God, God himself sees. Uh, uh, Ezekiel turned around and said to God, but God, you know, and I'm going to get into that. God, you know, and God says, yeah, I know, I know because I'm an all knowing God, but do you know it? And that's the question that God has for, uh, for many of us today and for, for everyone that's listening on this live broadcasting. Do you know it? Do you know the power that lives on the inside of you? As I said, I, I remember when I wanted to start my Kingdom Global Impact Network. Uh, many years ago, I had, I had the blueprint. I, I wrote it on a piece of paper and I put it away because I did not have uh, the finances uh, to to accommodate or to give birth to the vision. I didn't have the finances at the time. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, how am I going to start up this ministry without the finance? Because it requires finance uh, for uh, uh, and money for mobilization. God, what do I do? And then God says to God said to me very profoundly, He said, visions don't work unless you do. And I said, that's odd because God, I have a job. But you see, God wasn't talking about my natural job. He wasn't talking about my career and natural job. He said, visions don't work unless you do. What God was saying to me 
is that I want you now to work the vision. Work the vision. And he's given us creative power and innovation on the inside of us to be able to produce it. See, a lot of times people think that wealth is money. In fact, money is the lowest form of wealth. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Money is probably one of the lowest forms of wealth. He said, I have given you an idea. An idea is that which creates wealth. If you have an idea, if you have innovation, if you have belief, if you have faith, if you operate in authority, then all of these things shall be added unto you. All you need is an idea to create something. And that's why many of us is not able to create certain things. And listen, I too am now are practicing that uh, 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 principle. People don't understand there's kingdom principles. I don't know where we get this ideology in Christianity that it's okay to be broke and poor. Now, yes, I am not saying don't be meek and lowly of heart. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm a little hot. I'm trying not to sweat out my hair. I just did my hair today and I did a nice cut. So I'm trying not to sweat it out. But he said, uh, he said that we, we're, we're not supposed to think as paupers, God is not a God, God is not a God of poverty. I, I want you to think that way. Well, well, maybe God does and listen, everybody's not going to be rich. Okay, everybody's not going to be filthy rich. However, however, it doesn't mean that God will not provide for you. It doesn't mean that He wants you to live below your standards. He's an all-sufficient God. And so I said, Lord, what do I do now to make this vision come to pass? He then began to infuse and deposit. And I'm speaking to the entrepreneurs, the business owners, those who have ministry, those who have ideas, those who want to get things started, but can't, can't, can't start it. Some of you want to get things started, but can't start it. I'm teaching you kingdom principles. Now, some of you uh, uh, have even also got into the phase of starting, starting it, but you can't execute. Okay, so it's not just to start something. It also uh, requires execution. Okay, it also requires execution. And so that's why God put his breath inside of you. Let me move along here because I want to break this. This text down to you. And I hope you guys are receiving this. Guys, go ahead and start a watch party. Go ahead and share. And like I said, this, this, this message tonight is not going to be one to hype you up. But it's going to be one to teach you a, a spiritual a kingdom principle. So that way we can begin to recondition our minds. Uh, and begin to operate in the authority that God has given us. Okay? And so... What happened uh, 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 tonight, and don't disconnect from this live broadcasting, because I want you guys to listen. Uh, purpose. Purpose. Watch this. I wrote this down. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why people choose to call when, I, when I'm doing my live broadcasting. It's, so purpose now is suspended. I'm going to give you an analogy. Purpose is suspended in the spiritual realm. Okay? So literally, uh, uh, this is your purpose. It's already there. It was already there before you were conceived in your mother's womb. Purpose has already preceded you. There is, has already been a predetermined plan of God for your life. He's given purpose and purpose is suspended in the spiritual realm. It's literally just hoovering in the spiritual realm. And so what God wants you to do, watch this, what God does is that he allows you now to come into the earth realm. So now you are born. Every purpose, every person is born. Because the purpose preceded you. The purpose is suspended. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, uh, Apostle Drinker. <laughs> Thank you. Purpose is suspended in the realm of the spirit. And then watch this. Now you are born. You are born. And so whenever a person is born, the, the reason why you are born 
is so that now you can now come into a collision and marry your destiny. So your destiny now that already preceded you is now introduced to you. Is introduced to you. But because you are the living mechanism to your purpose, you now have to walk it out. So it's not that your purpose, uh, 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 it doesn't have substance. You are the living organism that brings that, that uh, mobilization to your purpose. And so a lot of people, as I said, is just existing. They are born, but have not come in contact to their purpose. They have not come in contact with their purpose. And so, and I hope I'm not losing my audience here. I want you to understand it. Okay, so I'm going to reiterate for maybe those who might have missed it or who did not understand the analogy. Purpose is suspended in the realm of the spirit. Whenever we were born, it preceded us. Whenever we were born, God allowed us to be born to activate the purpose. Because purpose cannot be activated without you or without a living uh, organism. So the living organism, the, you as a person who has a Ruach breath, now is, comes into collision with your purpose and then you walk it out. Then uh, 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 you'll see your life in, uh, uh, in alignment. Things in your life will begin to get activated. Uh, uh, but when your life is not aligned, you cannot come into contact with your destiny, which is why uh, many people are living their lives pointless, directionless and unavailing huh i'm gonna say it again pointless directionless and unavailing because many of you are just born but not have come have, have not come into contact with your purpose that's suspended in the realm of the heavens so many of you have gifts treasures ancient things that god wants to be unlocked to you but unless you come in contact with it, unless you open your mouth to activate it, it can never be transported to you. And watch this. This is why even with Daniel, Daniel himself showed us uh, 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 that example in the Bible. He showed us that example is that when he uh, prayed and fasted, he was petitioning God for a thing, but it was held up and suspended in the second heavens because there are, there are things literally arrested for you in the realm of the spirit. So there are things that's not, that, that belongs to you that's arrested in the realm of the spirit, but also awaiting you. There are two things. You have a lot of things that's in the spiritual realm. But number one, they're either arrested or they're either, it either needs to be awakened. The two A's. It needs an awakening and it needs, uh, or, or it's been arrested. And so this is why I'm saying when God gives us his word, he's allowing for you to speak a thing to create an awakening. An awakening. There are too many churches that are dying, decaying, because there's no awakening. Things in your life, you're going year after year. A lot of you are aging, not maturing. You're growing old, but never living a substantial life. And I can tell you there was a season in my life that I too have been there. I have been there for years and I'm like, Lord, what is this? So that's why some of you are so frustrated. God, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm fast, fasting, and I'm not seeing results. Because prayer is great. Sure, prayer allows God to hear you. But faith allows you now to access. Faith allows you to access and activate that which was already preceding you. What you need is already done. Are you hearing me? What you are praying for is not something that's new to God. It's new to you, but it's not new to God. Because you all have already been pre predetermined. God knew all of your prayers even before you were born. I'm going to say that again. 
God knew all your prayers even before you were born. So he has already made the provision for that prayer before you came into the earth realm. It has already been answered. Please understand that your prayers are already answered. You have to now find how I do I access. You don't need to find answers because the answers has already been answered by God. You need to find access. How do I find access? Access is found through activation. By exercising your kingdom authority, your sonship, you now need to find yourself. You don't need to find that prayer. You don't need to find that blessing. You don't need to find that treasure because that treasure is already there. You need to find yourself so that you can find what belongs to you. Because if you don't find yourself, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost just told me to talk about the prodigal son. If you don't find yourself, you will never find what belongs to you. See, the prodigal son went out thinking, thinking that he can find substance outside of what God has already provided, outside of what his father has already provided. To the point where he went out there, he, become, he became weary, he became frustrated, he became beaten down, he became a tired, he became a, a, an object for satanic assault. He became a, an object of warfare because he disconnected himself from the grace that already belonged to him. So when he came back into the fall head to his father's house, things was already given to him. But he wasn't privy to the the, the to the uh, the the mindset and the ideology that it's already here so a lot of times people go outside of god to look for something that is that to, you go outside of god to look for god in something that he's not in i'm gonna say that again you go outside of god to look for god for something that he's not in so that's why you see people going into the world, going into relationships, going into things that God is not in. He's not into it. He's not into it. Then you get frustrated and you wonder why there's no result. It's because you disconnected from what has already rightfully belonged to you. All you needed to do was to stay positioned. Huh? All you needed to do was to stay positioned right inside the will of God. And find your sonship find your sonship you don't need to go looking for your blessing your blessing is inside of you what you're looking for is already inside of you okay you just need to uh, get deep down on the inside and say Lord how do I discover me when you spend time in discovering you, you don't have time to be worrying about what's around you or uh, uh, worrying about the exterior. No, you don't have to worry about, oh God, I need this and God, I need that and God, I need that. No, that's low level type of prayer. That's low level elementary type of stuff. Because when you discover you, you discover, you discover God in you. That's why it's important. When you discover you, you discover the God inside of you that like how he did with Adam, Adam had God in him. He had God-like attributes and quality in him because he bared the name and the DNA of God. What you need to do is find the God in you. Find his attributes, find his substance inside of you that he has already placed there. The blueprint is there. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Don't make this thing difficult than what it already is. Some of us are making things so difficult. And when I began to recondition my mind and to stop thinking this low level thinking, see, I was starting to think of myself like, you know, I'm a servant and, um, and I, yes, I, we're all servants of God. Sure. But I'm not, I'm talking about a servant as far as a, as a, as a slave to the things of this world 
Not a slave to God and a bond servant to God, but a slave to the thing of this world. You don't have to be a slave of this world. You are son of God. Sons and daughters of God, right? Low level thinking. And so if God has infused his intellect on the inside of you, what did you allow inside of you to diffuse what was already deposited? And I've spoken to you on, 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 on the last segment. I've spoken to you that, um, that when Satan had encountered, when he had an encounter with Eve, when he had an encounter with Eve, he watched this. Watch how powerful this is. When he had an encounter with Eve, he spoke to Eve and he gave her word. He spoke word in her that created and shifted a different paradigm. Hey, God bless you. I see Apostle Jonathan Smith. God bless you, man of God. Great to see you. I see our, our Pastor Kevin Grace. It's truly a pleasure and an honor to see you, man of God. Thank you for joining this live broadcasting. And all of you who have jumped on, thank you so much. I see somebody said something here. That's right, Henry. Uh, God's creative nature, DNA, divine chromosomes, God's fingerprint in the word. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so... Satan spoke to Eve and diffused the diffused the infusion that already took place in her. He reinvented and reshifted the par the, the paradigm, that reality, her mindset. So now she started to think on a lower level of thinking. Her the intellect of man then became thwarted because of something else that was interjected inside of them what have you allowed to be injected in you so that you would not believe god my god what have you allowed inside of you so that you cannot operate in faith and sonship see a diabolical suggestions was given to eve so now she started to think on a lower level of thinking. She no longer was thinking on the intellect uh, as God has given them. Now she had an awakening, but it was an awakening to a lower level of intellect, lower level of morality, lower level of, 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 of all of these things that God has already initially deposited. What they needed was already inside of them. But yet they allowed something inside of them. And many of us allow doubt inside of us that causes for us. Amen. Yes, Apostle. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, are, uh, we allow doubt, fear, anxiety, and all of these things now to get into our cognizant, cognition, uh, uh, into our intellect to the point now. Whatever you think is what you're going to build. You have to remember your mind is the greatest uh, architect. Are you hearing this teaching tonight? This is a strong uh, 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 teaching, revelation, rev uh, revelatory teaching. I want you to understand this. What Your mind is an architect. Whatever you put in it, whatever substance you put in it, is the manifestation is what you're going to build. Whatever you think is the house you're going to live in. If you think small, you're going to live in a small house. Huh? That's right, men of God. So a man think it, so is he. So uh, why is it that we as believers think so narrow-minded? We think so small. That's simply because... Something has thwarted your mindset for you not to think on God's level. And we almost think it illegal to do so. It is not illegal. If it was illegal, then God would not have put his Holy Spirit inside of us. If we do not have the Holy Spirit, then it is illegal. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Spirit is dropping revelation. There's a difference. When a person is lifted up in pride, in pride, and have these things, it becomes illegal. You know why? Because God did not put that inside of you. 
God only puts his Holy Spirit inside of you to think big. But you can outside of his Holy Spirit and within your own human intellect, if you think big in your own strength and your own human intellect, it's illegal to do so. And that's why, that's why Eve, that's why Eve and uh, Adam and Eve, when they gained that knowledge, it was illegal because it was not God's intellect for you to think that big, to, for you to think bigger than God, for you to think your, that you can, your, your knowledge can supersede his. See, that's what pride does. Pride says my knowledge can supersede God's. That I can think sufficient within myself. Huh? But when God puts his raw breath in you, his ability in you, his word in you, he now allows for it, he now allows for you to think big legally. My God. And I really hope you're catching this. And I promise you tonight, I'll be honest with you, this is all revelation that God has given me. I was able to jot down some notes, but that's about it. Um, I, I wasn't even uh, fully prepared, but God always has a fresh rhema word. Amen. And which is what I always endeavor to come on here with uh, is a fresh rhema word for you. And so that's why, my friends, so many of us is unavailing. We're so unavailing in seeing immediate results is because we're not thinking on God's level. How? We think so small. We don't think that God actually wants us to to eat the good of the land. We don't think that God wants us to be prosperous. That's why he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Now the issue is that when God does unlock certain treasures to you, he does not want your treasures to become your God. See, that's the difference. He's not telling you not to have creative power. He's not saying for you not to operate in, in sonship. He's not saying for you to uh, 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 not to possess certain things. You can have things, but, as, a, a, but as, as long as the things don't have you. I'm going to say that again for somebody who done missed it. For somebody who thinks that it's okay to be prideful and egotistical. Or to think that you're better than anyone else. Or to think that you are, are, are above others and you're esteeming yourself above others. No. What he said, huh, is that you can have things because these are an inheritance. But as long as the things don't have you. That's right, Apostle, a drinker. Don't make idols out of them. That's right. Ap Apostle Smith says anything outside of our dependence of God is prideful and dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It becomes, right, it becomes an, a, 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 a reproach. It becomes satanic. So anything that you're thinking big outside of the infusion of God becomes pride and then it becomes illegal. But only when God gives you the ability to do so, it is then legal. So watch this. Watch this. Let me show you how it's legal. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord, watch this, and the hand of the Lord came upon me. Number one. That is the key word. I'm in Ezekiel chapter 7, starting from verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me. That's key word. Huh? That is key word. Whenever the hand of the Lord comes upon you, it means that he is sanctioning you. He's commissioning you. He's approving you. He's authorizing you. Are you hearing these different synonyms I'm, synonyms I'm using? Huh? I'm using these words, <laughs> amen, because I want you to see the different, uh, not cinnamons. <laughs> I have a list, so please bear with me. <laughs> amen, he wants you to have that too. He wants it to be sweet and all spiceful, to God be the glory. <laughs> amen. And so he's, used, he, he's, he, he's putting his hands upon you. He's authorizing, <laughs> he's authorizing and giving you his divine approval, okay? So this is how you know it's solid. There's validity to it. There's validity because the hand of the Lord comes upon you to sanction you, to commission you, to authorize for you to go forward. The hand of the Lord came upon me and watched this and brought me out of the spirit. 
So not only did the hand of the Lord came upon him, which means that he had a commission, but it brought him. So whenever God gives a commission, he's also going to allow it to be directional. Okay? God is not going to give somebody a commission and not give you direction. So if you find that if you are operating in, in a certain grace and you have no direction, it's simply because it could be potentially, perhaps, it's because it's either you have not tapped into this power or simply the hand of the Lord wasn't uh, upon you to do a work, which is why it is very important. And I know Apostle uh, Smith is on here and he can attest to this. It's so important that if God is sending you out to the highways and the byways, to possess the land or as an apostolic or prophetic grace to decree and declare a thing that you will have the hand of the Lord upon you. Don't go out there until you are in with power from on high. Don't go out there saying that, I, oh, I'm anointed, so I'm going to go out there and just do it because you say you're a Christian or I have a gift. So let me just go out there and precede God and, and, and take on things on my own. No. If the hand of the Lord is not upon you, it is not going to succeed. That's why this particular text started off that way. Dry bones cannot live again. There will not be an awakening, a revival, a, a, a renewing, a renewal, a, a regeneration unless the hand of the Lord is upon it. And that's why we see so much decaying and deprivation going on in the body of Christ. There's no true movement because of the hand of the Lord is not upon it. So it needs approval, authentication, validity, sanction, commission. Then it also has to be directional. God does not do things aimlessly. He will give you direction. He brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley of dry bones. So now, again, I'm going to reiterate. Commission. Then number two was directional. Then number three, he set me, set me down in the midst. It is also divine positioning. He will then position you. He positions you for to do a particular work. Huh? He positions your mindset. He positions your thinking. He positions you to see manifestation in the midst of dry bones, which means that when God then positions you, don't think that he's going to do it for you. He puts you in, uh, in situations that seems impossible. Situations that seem like they're decaying, that they're dead, that they're hopeless, that they're lifeless. is because the reason why God does that is because he's trying to activate his attributes in you. So a lot of times... People look at the dead situations in their life as something bad. And God is trying to tell you, this is not a bad thing. He's trying to condition your mind of how you see things. He's saying to you, sons and daughters, it is not a bad thing to be in the midst of something that appears to be dead. It is not, it is not, it is not eulogized. I have not funeralized it. It only appears dead. And the reason why I put you in a situation that looks dead because I'm trying to awaken my attributes in you. I want you now to act uh, to live by faith and not by sight. I want you now to 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 activate your faith. Activate the attributes I've given you. Activate your dominion, your power and authority. So he put you because if God had put you in a situation that looked like there was life there, then you would you wouldn't take the time out to exercise what was inside of you. You will never know what's inside of you or the strength of what has been deposited in you unless you have been put in a situation that seemed like it was dead. So some of you seem like your ministry is dying, your marriage is dying, uh, uh, the, the, the nation is dying, all these things, but God has to put you there to show you and to demonstrate divine uh, uh, divine sonship that you also have. Listen, I want you to understand that that situation is not dead. That situation that looks like there's no hope, it's in despair, is not dead. 
Somebody type in the text box. It is not dead. Christ has not breathed on it. It is not dead because it all it requires is just a breath to bring it back to life. All it requires is for you to breathe. That's why there's life and death in the power of the tongue. He said only if you will open up your mouth and decree a thing, it is not dead. So many of you have allowed your blessing to be eulogized. You read off the obituary. You said that I cannot make it. You spoke death in your life and it became a curse to you. God said, I want you to reverse all of that. Change the way you see things. Because if you can see, if you can see life in a dead situation, then it can come back to life again. Huh? It is not dead. Uh, verses 2. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. Which now means that God is going to allow me to begin to evaluate some things. Now, I, I, now he's measuring your belief system. He's measuring how much depth and dimension you have in you. He allowed me to pass by it all around. What is your depth and dimension? Because your depth and dimension is what's going to, de to determine the outcome and manifestation of what you see. Huh? If you don't see manifestation in your life, it's because you have not tapped into that dimension. Or either there, has, there is no depth to you. I want you to change the way you see things. Stop saying I'm broke. Stop saying I, I don't, I, 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 um, I'm never going to get married. Stop saying my ministry will never flourish. Stop saying, well, God promised me this, but my prophecy is not coming to pass. Stop speaking those words into your life. Start to see yourself differently. When you begin to do it and God allows you to pass by it all around and evaluate it, you will begin to see things differently. Huh? What time is it? I'm almost through. Hold on. So he says, and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. Okay? There were very many. Now God did not say that you won't have Many situations in your life that will be dead. That would appear to be dead. Okay? Choice words here. That it would appear to be dead. All it requires is not dead. It is not dead. It just needs life. Huh? It appeared to be very dry. Have you ever seen, like, when you, when you, you ate um, chicken and then your bones was left in the sun? I can imagine this is how it looked. And I can imagine that's how many of you all life look. Dry, brittle, no substance, sustenance. Doesn't seem like it's inside of it anymore. Huh? And he said to me, son of man, can these dry bones live? Now, I want to make sure I'm not getting my head myself because I want to uh, look, look it up here. I, I dropped down a few things. So let me just take the time out to... um. To share it with you share with you okay so let me just use my notes here what I what I jot it down it says here according to Jewish customs according to Jewish customs and my friend is on here uh Pastor Kevin Gray so let, correct me if I'm wrong I know you're into all this Hebrews Jewish and all this other good stuff uh I just prophesied <laughs> amen so I'm learning so let me know if I'm wrong you guys are the scholars here Amen. So according to Jewish customs, bones that were left in the open was considered to be indignity. Watch this teaching. Bones that were left in the open was considered to be indignity and indecency. Huh? These bones were symbolic for a spiritually dead state. It represented uh, de uh, de despondency, dejection, and lack of hope. And the, the, this grave description was an indication that the bones <coughs> were in need of revival, <coughs> a rebirth, and an awakening. Huh? So let me just look at my notes here. It says, and here in this passage, we see that God had a, di a dialect with God. God asked him, asked prophet.
prophet Ezekiel a question. He propositioned his mind. He asked him a question. He says, he says <clears throat> that he didn't need man's intellect or advice, but he was provoking. He said, son of man, can these dry bones live? So uh, God wasn't asking um, Ezekiel that question because he needed advice or counsel or his intellect. God doesn't need our two cents, okay? He, he has all of that. He has all of that intact and more. So he wasn't asking Ezekiel that question because he was oblivious to it. But he was provoking uh, man's will to come into agreement with him to intervene on the earth because agreement brings activation. That's why the Bible says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. All God really wants you to do is to be able to see it. Because if you can see it, then heaven can come in agreement with earth and then I can perform for you. But I cannot perform for you if you can't see it. And that's why there's no activation because you just can't see it. You just can't see it. And that's why God deals with the prophets. Watch this. Before, oh my God, thank you Holy Ghost. I love when he drops revelation on me. Before God allows a prophet to open his, his or her mouth, he will first open their eyes. He will first open their eyes before they open their mouth. Huh? Because if you open your mouth without getting understanding from the mind, your spiritual eyes, then you can, uh, you can create more havoc. You will create more havoc. So God has to train your eyes and your mind before you open your mouth. So many people want to open their mouth, especially prophets. So many so-called prophets want to open their mouth first before they open up their mind. And when you open up your mouth, you don't realize your mouth and your words become a grave. And whether uh, instead of it become an awakening and becoming life, it becomes death and things happen prematurely. They die prematurely because you open up your mouth before you open up your mind. That's why he always asked the prophets, what do you see? Huh? He didn't necessarily say, well, what do you say? No, he would ask the prophets, what do you see? Because if I can get you to see what I see, then you then can speak what I speak. Then you learn my heavenly language. You learn my vernacular. So if you can see what I see, then you can learn my, lang my language and my vernacular. Then you can act like I act. You cannot act like God unless you see like God. You first need to see like God, then you are allowed, then you are allowed to open your mouth. I get nervous when I see people just want to prophesy and prophesy, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. You're just opening your mouth, but you have no direction. Huh? Isn't that what the word of the Lord says here in Ezekiel 30, uh, 37? That the Lord, the head of the Lord came first. It's, it's instructional. The head of the Lord has to come first. Huh? Then he said he led him, which means it was directional. He set him in the midst of the valley of the dry bones. He was then positioned. Huh? He was positioned and then what happened after that? And then he says, son of man, he asked him a question. Then he said, now that I've, now that I've laid my hands on you, now that I positioned you, now I got to train your mind. I got to train your eyes. Huh? Now I'm going to train your eyes to see like me. And especially for a prophet. A lot of prophets speak things. And it, it's then it winds up not being of God. Because you didn't see it through his lens. A lot of people will open their mouth and declare things. And say things. And it's really not. It's really not authorized by God. It's because you didn't see it the way God see it. That's why so many people can look at sinners and say, oh, well, look at that person or look at this person. You would never see, you would never see people, the, 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 the dying, you would never see the dying, the sinners or people who you don't like. You would never see them the right way to speak life into them because you don't see it God's way. Huh? Isn't that like many of us today in church? 
because you don't see a person in a certain light, you diminish them, you don't like them, you hate them, you look at the, the you look at the sinners as if you're superior to them, and you can speak life to them. You can prophesy to them. You know why you can't do that? Because you don't see it God's way. So that's why God will say to you, before you even open up your mouth to say nothing, you need to see it my way. Because if you don't see it my way, you're speaking illegally. If you can't see God's people his way, then you are not qualified to speak on his behalf. I need you to see what I see. Feel what I feel. You know, I talk to, you know, even though this probably not be the best idea, uh, but I'm just going to use an example. I don't know if you guys ever saw like the horror movie um, called Saw. My friend hates when I watch that, but you know, that movie Saw, uh, you know, it had a really good concept to it. And for me, I, I'm like a, I, I'm a type of person, I like to deal with the mind, you know, I, I like to get into the mind. And so, that movie was Saw, that's what the gentleman did. You know, he made people suffer because they needed to see things the way he saw it. Say, I mean, even though it was a bad thing that he did, but he wanted people to see things the way he saw. Well, on the contrary, God wants you to see things the way he sees it. Right? So God, that's right. I, I love that man of God. God, open my eyes before you open my mouth. Come on. Somebody type that in the text box. God, open my eyes before you open my mouth. Because you can, we can, let me tell you, we can really create damage. I'm telling you, there was a while back I was very sarcastic. You know, and I'm still learning. <laughs> but we need to ask God. God, open my eyes before you open my mouth. Look, we all have fallacies. Don't don't act like we, we don't have areas where we don't need to invert, we, we need uh, uh, improvement on. Uh, we all got some kind of bones in our, in our closet. We all got some valleys of dry bones that we still need to work on. God open my eyes before I open my mouth. Huh? Before I open my eyes, God, let me see things the way you see it. <laughs> That's right. Tame my tongue. God help me not to be sarcastic. <laughs> right? And so, and I love that. It's okay. Because a lot of times, you know, we, we put on this facade and we act so holy and sanctimonious and holy and endowed like, Oh, there's no fault. There's no need for improvement. We just, we're in our glorified bodies. Of course, we've got to be mature because we're leading by examples. So I'm not justifying anything, but we do have to uh, uh, be able to acknowledge our own human fallacies and areas where we do need help and, uh, uh, and improvement. Okay? So watch this. Watch this. In order for God to intercept in your situation... It requires for you to exercise your faith, prophesy to your problems, huh, and acknowledge God's supernatural abilities and believe that he will perform it. Just give me a second here, look at my notes. Believe that he will perform it. Huh? God says that he will cause breath to enter into you. He will cause breath to enter into you. And this signifies, huh? This signifies that whatever substance God had transferred inside of you, it will cause you to live. That's another thing. How is it that you can be in the presence of God and God is breathing, but you're still not living? I have a question for you. How is it that God is breathing, but you're still not living? It behooves me, and I'm talking about naturally, naturally and also spiritually. How can God be breathing among you and in you, but you're still not living holy? You're still not operating in your sonship. You're still not operating in your authority. So this is why, this is why it concerns me. Is the hand of God really upon some people that I see? The way they live their Christian life, I have to ask myself, God, do you, are you breathing in them? Is your hands upon them? You cannot tell me that God's hand is upon you, but you're still living like hell. Something is wrong with that picture. I'm not saying that we don't have errors where we fall short, okay? But I'm talking about just your life is just jacked up. Something is wrong. Whenever God breathes into you, 
there has to be a regeneration. It's a process, yes, but a regeneration and transformation then takes place. If, if you happen to be anywhere or within a church or in your personal life and you don't see transformation, you don't see things quicken and come into life, you want to begin to evaluate it. God, are you really present? Uh, uh, is there something that I need to work on? You need to evaluate that. All right? Uh, so I, I want you to understand this. Let me move on here. So whatever it is that you're praying for and it's dead, it looks lifeless or hopeless, God is going to put sinews on your situation. He's going to put sinews on your situation. Huh? He's going to clothe it and cover it. As I said, in the Jewish custom, exposed bones meant indignity. Every indignity, every shame in your life that is exposed and does not have sin sinews upon it I dare you I defy you to open up your mouth and prophesy to your situation and I guarantee you that sinews will then come upon your life sinews if you if you dare to open up your mouth and prophesy to your situation proclaim a thing decree and declare a thing by apostolic uh, uh, prophetic grace by your sonship if you would then begin to open up your mouth and con position yourself and see things the way God see it, you will find that sinews will come upon your situation that that which was dead will now quicken and come to life that uh, uh that shame you will no longer be um um living in indignity there will no longer be shame in your life but now god will cover you he's gonna cover you uh, are you broke if you prophesy god will cover you i'm telling you sin news is gonna come on some of you guys finances Sinews are going to come on your marriage. Sinews is going to come into your ministry. Sinews is going to come upon your health. Sinews now is going to come upon you. God is speaking. You're speaking sinews. God is speaking sinews back inside of you. He's speaking life. His ruach. Sinews. His uh, attributes. His qualities. He's giving it back to you. You now have to uh, repossess your possession whatever what was infused on the inside of you god says take it back it's not dead all you need to do is open up your mouth sin you will sin news will come back on you all you gotta do is open up your mouth huh all you gotta do is just activate what i've already given you and so i'm, I'm speaking to someone tonight to let you know that you are not defeated you don't have to live your life below God's standards. Whatever you speak into your life, God will then uh, allow for it to be materialized. He wants to bring an awakening on the um, an awakening on the inside of you. So watch this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna close with this. Watch this. So again, I said, "Oh Lord, you know." And again, said to me, he said, "Oh Lord, you know." Isn't that how we pray today? Oh God, you know all my troubles. You know all my problems. And God says, yeah, I know. But do you know? And so that's what he says. And again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, which means that if you attempted to do it the first time and it didn't work, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. Don't relent. Huh? Be relentless. Don't relent and say, well, you know what? No, that situation didn't work. I'm not, I'm not doing this again. Breathe again. That's all you need to do. Breathe again. You don't have to give up. Just breathe again and you will find that sinews will come upon your situation. I guarantee you. Oh, that's right. That's right. I like that. I like that, Carissa. She said, sinews, I entreat thee. That's right. You got to speak things into your life. Prophesy it. Until you see uh, uh, divine manifestations. Amen. Thank you so much, Shaquilla. Thank you so much for that. And so watch this. And, and he says, Thus saith the Lord God to these dry bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live, 
and I will put sinews in you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And watch this. I'm going to close with this. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied. See, now confidence is built up. Now faith is activated. Now he's realizing, wait a minute, I can do this. <clears throat> I have sonship. I'm exercising it now. I'm putting it into practice. And there was a noise and a suddenly took place. Huh? A suddenly took place, a rattling, and bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Isn't that just like how uh, we gave the analogy uh, uh, with the beginning, how God created Adam, and Adam was just like this. Adam was just like this. It came together, there was a coming, coming together, but there was no breath. And as I said to you before, as I said to you before, a lot of you can just be existing. See, the bones came together now. But how do I activate it? How do I now activate my destiny that's suspended for me in the spiritual realm? How do I do it? And God gave him the remedy. Here's the remedy. Here's the spiritual diagnosis to your problem. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. See, see, now he's calling him son. If you are not a son, you don't have a right to prophesy. You have a right to prophesy when you now have become mature enough to do it. If you are prophesying, and don't have sonship, you're prophesying once again illegally. So now he calls him son. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? He said, son of man. Now he's a son of man. He's talking to his prophet. And, and of course, it's referring to God as well. Thus saith the Lord God, prophesy to the four winds, O breath and breath on the slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them. And they lived. They stood upon their feet. An exceedingly great army. Sonship. Kingdom access. That's right. Authority. Dominion. If you can prophesy. As a son. Knowing your authority. That God has given you. And you, you prophesy breath. And life back into it. Whatever that was laying dormant, whatever that was dead in your life, shall quicken and come to life. If it was dead, if it was bound, if it was restricted, if it was limited, now it's time for it to stand up because sinews have come upon your situation. Go ahead and type that in the text box. Sinews have come upon my situation. All you've got to do is prophesy. And you see, every true prophet, and I'm not afraid to say this, because a true prophet will never want you to have dependency upon them. A true prophet will always point you back to God. And that's what I'm doing tonight. As a prophetess of the Lord, Most High God, I am pointing you back to God to let you know that you too also have sonship. That's why God says, he, he, Apostle Paul says, I wish that you would prophesy. Huh? You may not be a prophet. You may not be called to the prophet, uh, the office of a prophet. Huh? You may not have the, uh, uh, the fivefold ascension gifting of, 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 of being a prophet or an apostle. Right? Or that maybe that governing grace. But you can prophesy. And so I, I'm teaching you this tonight. So that you don't have a dependency upon man. See, God never created prophets. For you to have dependency upon prophets. Huh? No. He, your dependency is in God. Your dependency is his ability to instruct you, to lead you, to guide you, to put breath in you. So that you can put breath in your situation. Yes, the prophets and the apostles are necessary. And I'm saying that as a prophet of God myself. We have direct access to God. 
which makes it a little bit more accessible and more easier because uh, God does nothing without revealing it to his prophets. Thank God for that, with all humility. And so, uh, yes, the prophets are, are, are amazing. You know, I thank God that I, he has uh, humbly allowed me to be one. And so we do have, there's abilities that we have that many other people do not have. Okay? And, and so, all prophets do is expedite what what he's put he put inside of you and if you don't have it then we can also uh stand in the gap to do uh to do to do just that to do just that amen and so i wanted to share that with you and so um that concludes uh this teaching for tonight for tonight and i pray that this teaching uh was edifying to you okay so tonight i'm not going to be doing any prophesying or i'm not going to be doing any praying because i want you now to begin to activate that sonship that we spoke about tonight you gotta you gotta put it into practice begin to command some things look in the mirror get the word of god i am the head and not the tail and you have to speak convincingly you gotta speak like you know it i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath Prophesy to your situation. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Get in the word. Know the promises of God. See, some of you are praying without the word, without the word, and that's a problem. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Uh, uh and, and then you now look for the, uh, the 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 scripture, the promise for your problem, and prophesy to it, and prophesy to it, and speak life into it until it happens. And if you need a little bit of reinforcement, you call on the prophets. You ask God, God lead me and guide me. Call on God. You can call on the prophet to, to help you to, to push that dimension. Unlock. That's what we do. Prophets, apostles. They unlock certain dimensions inside of you. But they're treasures that are being unlocked. They're treasures that you ought to get access to. Huh? Huh? There are many things that God uh, wants for you uh, to yet attain. But it's already inside of you. He blew his breath in you. All you need to do is find you. And in finding you, as a son of God, you find God. And if you find God, you find answers to your problems. Amen. Well, listen, that concludes uh, this, this live broadcasting um, on this evening, I do have an extremely, extremely busy week. I have had a, it's, uh, a busy week. So please do pray my strength um, uh, in the Lord. And uh, I have a very busy week coming up. Uh, so pray for me as I do the same for you. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And listen, if you will, as I oftentimes say it, and I don't like to constantly say it, but I have to say it because I'm speaking things into existence because I do have this powerful network that God has entrusted me with, with all humility, he's entrusted me with the Kingdom Global Impact Network. He's entrusted me with it. And so I, 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 I don't take it lightly. And he's um, put words in my mouth uh, to be able to, to um, creative power, to be able to sustain it. And it requires access participation. So please continue to be a blessing to this ministry. I, uh, well, the reason why I say this every week, because every week I do not have the same audience. Okay? So a person may say, why she got to say that every week? Because I know I can hear it. So let me set the record straight. Okay? I say it every week because I don't have uh, the same audience every week. Thank God for the faithful partners that I do have. That is because of them, they have um, helping me like Nehemiah to build. To build. Um, they have a mind to work. Thank you so much. And uh, Kordisha Porter, she's one of them. Thank you, woman of God, for putting out this information. If you see it, she put it there. I do not even know how to pin it. Okay, that goes to show you. Okay, uh, it, the information is there. Uh, PayPal, Cash App. Uh, so it can help me to build because I have conferences coming up. And these conferences is not for me. It's for me to be able to host these events so that we can put sinews back on someone else. You got sinews on you now. So don't be selfish with this. You got sinews. You're saved. You're looking plush. You're looking fat. You're looking like God did something wonderful for you. 
But what about the homeless? What about those that are living in oppression? Huh? And us ministers of the gospel cannot mobilize the kingdom unless we activate it. So please help me to build by doing so financially. Thank you, woman of God. The money is for the kingdom's sake. I, none of this goes to myself. Okay? But I, and, and I do have a job. But as I said to you before, with a job, you cannot cover the expense of a global vision. So it requires active participation. So I truly would appreciate if you all just continue to be a blessing to this ministry, to partner with this ministry, whether it be one-time partnership or whatever it is. Um, so uh, for all of you that are on this live broadcasting, please share this video. Uh, start a watch party. And I'm telling you, and I'm being honest with you, um, I'm going to be very honest. Um, it's going to come to a point where I'm, I'm going to start minimizing my time here on social media. And, uh, and I'm, God is going to tell me when, I'm, when to do that. I'm going to start minimizing my time and also the duration of time and the frequency of time that I'm on here. Uh, and because God spoke to me on last week, he said to me, people don't value your words unless it's in a book. I'm going to say it again. He said to me, so plain as day, people don't value your words unless it's in a book. Huh? Unless it's in a book. And so people have to actually, people never value anything that's free. It's true. You know, people say, oh, why people got to be preaching for the preaching for preaching for money. But now when you have live broadcastings like this and you do do it for free, people don't honor it. They don't honor it. They don't give. They don't do. They don't want to do nothing. They just want everything for free. Everything for free. And you're getting substantial teaching. You're, you're not getting rubbish. You're not getting people just constantly prophesying to you and telling you, oh, God said it's your season. See, they love stuff like that. Oh, God, it's your season. And you still broke. You still got issues. But when you hear messages like this to literally recalibrate the atmosphere in your life, to reposition your mind, we don't, we don't honor it. We don't value it. And God told me, he said, stop minimizing your time. I'm, eventually, I'm going to start reading off the time that I'm on here. And everything that I'm teaching, I'm going to put it in the book. And I'm going to have to make people start buying it. Because I realize people will never value something unless they also invest in it. Because if they invest in it, they know what it took to get that money. And it's true. It's sad to say. This is how people think. I'm, I'm being honest. So I have to put what God, and, and what God invested in me it's too invaluable for anyone to just take it freely and, and just treat it as nothing. I fast. I pray. I seek God's face. I can do all of you know. I don't come on here with a, a recycled message. I literally get fresh revelation, remember word every single time I'm on here. I fight for this anointing. I fight for this revelation. I protect it for my dear life. So when people say, oh, well, the word of God is free. Listen, the devil is a liar. Somebody's paying the price for it. So it comes free to you, but it don't come free to that prophet who has to labor for it. No, it doesn't. So uh, people never value, like the Holy Spirit told me, people will never value your words unless it's in the book. And so I'm going to start doing just that uh, and, and start writing. And um, so I, I just wanted to share that. But um, thank you. Uh, for, uh, uh, for all of you faithful people, I thank you for the faithful ones, for not faithful, faithful, okay? Not the faithful, the faithful ones that choose to, uh, to invest your time. Even if it's not finance, you invest your time, uh, uh, your sacrifice. I appreciate you. It means a lot. Even sharing this video, I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. And I bless God for you and I will continue to pray for every single one of you. So, uh, guys, if you haven't already, this is no, this is not compulsory force or manipulation. You don't have to do it. So don't say, oh, that prophet forced us to do it and look at her talking. No, if you're going to do that, don't give it. God's still going to make a way for me. Okay. And this ministry. All right. Uh, but do it from your heart because you want to advance the kingdom. Amen. So just go ahead and, and just 
be a blessing to this ministry. The information is there on PayPal or Cash App. Uh, if you can, just sow uh, 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 something. Uh, I'm not going to put an amount to it. God will tell you what to do. Amen. So, well, listen, that concludes um, this live broadcasting. And for all of you saying, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for your teachings. I reciprocate that. A big thank you. I love all of you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you for allowing me once again to serve you every Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for sitting at this table where we break bread with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love you. Jesus Christ loves you, my friends. Live in the expectancy of God. Share this video, start a watch party, and so, 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 but most of all, serve, serve, serve. God bless you, and have a pleasant night.